everybody, how's it going? So I got a question a few weeks ago on SMG viewers comments that I thought warranted further investigation. Uh, this one comes from a fan of the channel who goes by the handle anus repairman. Cheap tube head, expensive cabinet, or expensive tube head, cheap cabinet. No, like I said, I thought that was a great question. Uh, I gave an answer based on my experience, but not on an actual shootout, where I said, you know, my PV Windsor sounded great going into my Mesa cabinet. But I've never actually plugged one of my really expensive tube heads into a really cheap cabinet before. You know, a lot of guitar players will talk out of their asses without actually backing anything up with evidence. So I figured, you know, I don't want to be like that. I actually want to, you know, put my money where my mouth is. So what I've done is I've assembled four critical pieces of gear. I've brought a PV Windsor, which cost $199 US at Guitar Center. And I'm plugging that into my Engel Pro cabinet, which you can get online at Sam Ash for $13. 1550 US. It is definitely my most expensive guitar cabinet. It's an absolute monster. And to compare that, what we have is my Mark II Rev Generator 120, which retails for $2699 US. It is the ultimate monster heavy metal recording amp. And I'm plugging that into a broke ass Behringer 4x12. Um, it's so fucking broke. Um, half the speakers are shorted out. I can only get sound out of one side, even though fucking with the modes and whatnot. Um, you can get a Behringer cabinet for 150 bucks, 200 bucks used on eBay. The one I have, you'd be lucky if you could get it for 50 bucks, like I said, because half of it shorted out. Okay, first up, let's take a look at Chris Rafinski playing some chords. All right, so there you go. That was pretty interesting. Um, as you can see, I've labeled things clip A and clip B because human perception is flawed and we tend to listen with our eyes rather than our ears. We get so hung up on nameplates, we tend to forget to actually listen to something before making up our minds. I ran into this thing a couple years ago when we did the sound is in the hands test. And, you know, we put things to an actual test and uh, people didn't like that very much. And they told me, you know, we did it wrong we, because we should have done this way, we should have done this way. Meanwhile, the empirical evidence is staring them right in the face. Clarity is in the hands, but the tone is definitely in the gear. Anyway, let's check out what happens when we run these setups with some clean guitars. <laughs> And of course, no test is complete without a full mix shootout. I gotta thank Jackson Ward for playing drums on that. Dude, you absolutely rule. You know, we got some pretty interesting results with that video. It wasn't quite what I expected. And in a lot of these shootouts, it never is quite what I expected because, you know, we've all got our preconceptions and our prejudices, but it's one thing to think you know how something will turn out. It's another thing to actually put one thing against another in a direct comparison and listen to the results with your own ears. Anyway, I made some conclusions here. However, I don't think my opinion matters all that much in this video. I think your opinion matters. And I want you guys to tell me, what do you think sounds better? Did you think clip A sounds better? Or did you think clip B sounds better? Hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit the subscribe button. I've got many more tests like this coming up. I'm out of here. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching this episode. If you like the content, please support the channel either at my SMG shop or through my Patreon. If you want to see more, hit one of the playlists. 
Thanks for watching. I'm out of here.